subscribe to the Light Sports and Ultra Light Flyer web video magazine with hundreds and hundreds of videos now online, including air show coverage, Rotax engine tech tips, Rotax 377, 447, 503, 532, and 582 engine rebuilding videos each two hours in length, propeller maintenance, advisors, and repairs, VRS parachute saves, Bing carb updates, and much, much more. Get a yearly subscription at www.ultralightflyer.com. Yes, we did survive it, Dan. We're here at Sun and Fun 2011, and we're glad we're still here. It was a rough yesterday, but today it's gorgeous, and we got lots of people out here looking at airplanes. And one of the ones they're looking at is the Ibis Magic, or do you say Ibis Magic? We call it Ibis. Ibis Magic was the is the name. Ah, uh, yes, the bird. Well, but this one looks different. We had a look at this down at Sebring, and that one was much narrower. This one's actually got wings on it. I bet it flies better now. It flies with wings on it. Yeah. And Phil has been, uh, Phil Bendick has been doing most of the flying work for Apollo LSA. And uh, they are bringing in the Apollo Fox airplane as well. We talked about that earlier, a nice little airplane. This one's quite a bit different though. This is an all metal airplane, is it not? Yes, it is. It's all aluminum. And uh, we're loading this thing up with leather interior. We put a ballistic chute standard, 10 inch glass cockpit, autopilot, radio, transponder. The works. Toe brakes both sides. It's got a Robertson Stoll system where you put the flaps down uh, about 40 degrees and the ailerons go down 15 degrees. Is that right? Yeah, I've flown this plane. Uh, so what is that? Does that mean you can get it down real slow then? So well, how slow can you get it? I'm indicating 27 knots um, when it starts to burble and believe it or not, I still have aileron control and it doesn't seem to want to break. It just wants to kind of keep flying. Wow. So I've got, uh, we're taking movies of all the flying. Right now, this is the R&D plane that uh, Yes, you told me earlier, Phil, uh, excuse me, uh, that you, Phil, that you're working on the SLSA project. That's correct. And um, uh, down at Sebring, you thought you'd have it all done by now, but you found that uh, there were a few more things we needed to work on. That, uh, and that and I've been busy with other things too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've so, all got plenty to do. So, yeah, so the project is, is moving along quite nicely, it looks it like, is, though. It is, and I'm very, very pleased with the airplane. And you know how that little Apollo, uh, uh, formerly the Fox, which is now the Apollo LSA, you know how that flies? <laughs> Yes. Well, this one flies the same. Is that right? Well, that was nice characteristic, so that speaks well. Everything is balanced. It's balanced. You put this thing in a full forward slip, and you're locked. Pedal locked aileron, and it's going as straight as you were going down the runway before. And uh, so that's what we're looking for, balancing. You can really add it up then. You can do slips like that, and you have all those flaps in the Robertson system. So 27 knots. You know, I know an airspeed indicator when it gets down that low. It's not right. It's probably, probably not exact, but that's yeah. definitely very, Just based very on what slow. I looked at with my GPS and my ground uh, speed, I think I was doing about 30 knots. Okay, well, yep. consider that 45 knots is the maximum stall speed that you can have in this LSA space. So 30 knots is actually way, way below that, and that is definitely slow. How fast does it go then? Well, I've been cruising this plane at 100 knots at about 4.8 gallons per hour. And uh, it uh, has a 113 VNE, and that's knots. bound by the fat okay. knots. Okay, 113 knot VNE. And that's okay. by the factory. And uh, of course, I haven't flown it faster than that yet. I will be flying it faster for our testing purposes. And um, we've got a camera that uh, we have mounted on the back of the plane. Um, we'll do some more testing with strings on the wings, we'll put the camera back again. And so we're going to do, a, we still have a lot of testing to do, but actually, if you order a plane today, you'll have it in four to five months. Four to five months. And is if, what you're by that time, by the time you get your plane, all the modifications that I've made, uh, that the factory is just willing to bend over backwards to <clears throat> give us whatever we want. And uh, there's just little things that I've asked for, really, at this point. Um, everything will be perfect. Now, this company's been around for a while, has sold a number of airplanes already. This is not the first this example is the 84th of it. One 84. Of this model. Now, they've got a couple they, other They do models. have other models, too. They even make a four seater that they put over 200 horsepower in. Is that right? Yeah. So, uh, it's. It, I was down in Columbia. I was very impressed with the company. I know they have the capacity to do anything we want. It's a Columbia is a place we associate with certain other activities, but unfortunately that's the smear, if you will, that media gives it. In fact, it's got quite a vibrant aviation community, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. But you have to be careful where you fly. Uh, was, yes. <laughs> when I was test flying in Columbia, 
they, they started telling me, okay, now when you go by yourself, uh, don't go over there, don't go over there. I'm like, why? Well, you might get You don't want to know, yeah. You don't want to know that. <laughs> so That's okay. We'll keep it here in America where it's safe to fly. Well, I, almost I, safe to fly wherever you want. I didn't so. fly myself. <laughs> so just, how are they offering this airplane into the United States? And, uh, is it coming in under its experimental category, LSA category? We're bringing the plane in. Apollo Aircraft is bringing the plane in, and we are uh, certifying it uh, as an SLSA. And we we work with the FAA. We don't deal with the uh, DARs. They've already inspected the plane. And they are very satisfied with it. He gave me the experimental. He says, anytime you're ready, let me know. And he gave me the thumbs up. So sure. Right now, you see, uh, we can't see it there because it's on the strut. Your camera probably didn't quite show it. But this one says experimental. But that's because right now, that's what it is. That's exactly. uh, moving towards special light sport aircraft. And I believe you told me this is going to have a pretty good price, despite all those impressive pieces of equipment you mentioned a bit ago. Right now, I've got 99.9 on this airplane. And I'm thinking that the retail should be around 129. That's what my competition is. Without these options, like a ballistic parachute, you know, um, I think there's an airplane that's going to be close to 200 here in the Light Sport Mall <laughs> if you put all the options that are on this plane. I won't mention any names, but uh, that's uh, what we're dealing with. And you sure this isn't a four place airplane? Well, you know, you almost could think so. I mean, uh, I suppose a small child could sit back there. There's not quite enough room for that, but look at all that baggage area complete with its own little netting to hold stuff down, which is a good idea when you're flying. And the big black thing there is not a suitcase, that's a parachute with a rocket motor behind it, made by the GRS company in the Czech Republic, able to carry down the whole airplane under a canopy in the event that something goes wrong. Of course, we all hope and pray that those kind of things don't happen, but I'm here to tell you that if you have a parachute on there, it gives you a lot of peace of mind. Probably never use it, but if you need it, you'll be real glad you had it. My wife, to adjustable seat size? Yes, it does. Let's uh, pan back here a little bit. Pull the seat forward. Phil is operating the seat back. So this is an in-flight adjustable seat then you could do. And look at that range there. I would say that was, uh, oh, what, eight inches or so Close forward and back. And looking in here at the pedals, which are nicely uh, branded pedals, uh, they are toe brake installations. And on both sides, uh, it uses a control yoke. Uh, which we don't see in too many LSA, but this one uses that. This plane that. also comes with a stick that uh, it actually has a little uh, a button that you pop the stick down for easy entry. Ah, is that right? So, so you can't you have can a joystick have a stick, or a yoke. Same price with a you know, stick or a yoke. And same so price. We've got a loaded it, panel here. We've got uh, you know, a little small collection of uh, steam gauges that makes some people comfortable in case the big glass goes dark on you. Nice to have some backup. And some pilots are just used to that. And indeed, a round gauge does give a real quick read on important stuff like airspeed and altitude. But then, in the middle here, and it is glowing today, but it's kind of bright out today, thank goodness, so you can't see it too well, but this is a very impressive, uh, uh, kind of the uh, Dynon Skyview equivalent, but from the MGL Avionics Company. This is the Stratomaster Odyssey, and one of the things I like about it is this whole panel arrangement up here, a very easy to see and read white button. So many people make black on black, and if you get in a low light situation, they're hard to know what to do. A well, lot to be but said for let's let's call them a conventional pilot, the kind that have flown behind a, a yoke and are used to having a trim wheel like this one behind in front of my hand here, throttle in the center, additional trim. Um, it's going to be an airplane that a lot of GA pilots are going to look at and go, yeah, this is this is kind of what I thought I was looking for. Some You're of the other ones, nice to have unique ideas. we got lots of them in LSA. There's one, something for everybody. But for those that have learned in a more conventional style, this looks like a pretty good choice. The Ibis Magic. And, and if they want to get more information, Dan, where would they go? The company's website is ApolloLSA.com. And do you have a flight report on this airplane, Dan? I don't yet because they're still waiting on their SLSA, but I live here in Florida, they live here in Florida, we'll get together we'll pretty soon, as soon as, it's, uh, as soon as it's done and I'll get a pilot report, that'll be available on bydanjohnson.com.